Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. Tightrope is a 1984 American psychological thriller film that was directed and written by Richard Tuggle, and it was produced and starred Clint Eastwood. The film opens with a young woman walking home from her birthday party as she's being stalked by a man that has distinctive sneakers on. After she drops one of her presents, a police officer offers to escort her to her front door. The camera then reveals to the audience that the policeman is wearing the same sneakers as the stalker. As you look at most modern police thrillers today, they're filled with simple-minded manipulations involving chases, violence, and characters that are painted in really broad stereotypes. This movie contains all those ingredients, but it also contains so much more, and it really is a throwback to the great cop movies of the 1940s when the hero wrestled with his conscience as much as with the killer. Clint Eastwood stars as a New Orleans homicide detective who is pretty different, as he possibly could be, from his character of Dirty Harry Callahan. His name in this film is Wes Block, and his wife has recently left him, and he lives at home with his two young daughters and several dogs. He's a really good but flawed cop with a particular hang-up. He likes to make love to women while they are handcuffed. He's well known to most of the kinkier prostitutes that inhabit the French Quarter, but his superiors don't know that when they assign him a huge case, the case of a mad strangler who's apparently an ex-cop, and he's on the prowl killing hookers in this New Orleans area. The real problem with Block's character is that he can't easily enter this world as a policeman after having entered it as a client. The other thing that pops up as a problem is that when he walks into this world, all his old urges return to him. The police work in the film is pretty standard. Interviews with suspects, paperwork, superiors chewing him out for not making more progress in the case. But the things that really stand out in this film are the scenes between Eastwood and the women that he encounters. Some of these being victims, some being hookers, and one of them that's played by Genevieve Bujold is a feminist victim's rights advocate who teaches self-defense classes for women. The detective has always been a bit more attracted to the flashy, gaudy women like the ones that appear as prostitutes in the French Quarter. But right away, we start to figure out that Bujol's character just isn't his type. She's in her mid-30s, she uses no makeup, she wears sweatshirts a lot, and cops just don't impress her. But somehow, believe it or not, a friendship does begin between these two characters. And this kind of becomes a center point in the film and the cop's investigation of the problem as he goes deeper into the messy underworld of the crimes that are committed, it seems that more evidence tends to suggest that he should be one of the suspects. Surely this movie has a real broad appeal for Dirty Harry fans, but this film has a little more ambition to it than the Harry movies. Eastwood's relationship with Bujold is more interesting than the ones that you'll normally find in his male-female relationships. You see, there's something at risk on both sides, and the whole thing is a learning process, making Eastwood realize that he must change, as it all pays off dramatically at the end, when their developing relationship fits into the climax of the investigation. This film is the first credited theatrical movie that Allison Eastwood is in. She's Clint's real daughter, and she plays Amanda Block, his daughter in the film also. 
She had previously appeared in some uncredited roles in a couple of other films prior to this, but she takes on this responsibility in an amazing manner. She does an excellent job in the film. And as a point of trivia, in 1989, Eastwood's daughter was stalked by a guy named Mike Joyson, who was from New Zealand. He had become obsessed with her after seeing her in this movie. Writer and director Richard Tuggle had a bad habit of not wearing underwear in the muggy New Orleans climate. One day while he was standing up on a camera truck, Clint Eastwood noticed that Tuggle's private parts were just hanging out for everybody to see. In front of everyone on the project, he ordered Tuggle to go back to his trailer and put some underwear on immediately. It's also reported that Clint Eastwood did the majority of the directing because he found that Richard Tuggle was just too slow behind the camera. But contractually, Tuggle still remained to have the director's credit in the movie. There were a lot of talk and rumors that Clint Eastwood might get his first Academy Award nomination for his acting in this film. Then there was some real shock and surprise when Eastwood wasn't even Oscar nominated. Now the studios kind of shut him down on his normal process in this film. At the time, Eastwood's housemate since 1975 was Sandra Locke, who had co-starred with him in six previous films. But she wasn't cast as the female lead in this one. Sudden Impact from 1983 was the last Eastwood film in which Locke appeared. And it was reportedly because Warner Brothers studio executives told the famed actor that the public had tired of seeing movies of him teamed with Locke. The French-sounding, French-Canadian Genevieve Bougeold was cast in this main female character lead of Beryl Thibodeau, as this casting gave kind of a French connection to the movie. She states at one point before filming started that she had a conversation with Eastwood and suggested that in this movie they shouldn't be shown in a love scene together, something that rarely never happens in an Eastwood movie. He always seems to bed the female lead. But Eastwood was completely receptive to this idea, and no love scene between the two was incorporated into the movie. Go back and look at this almost forgotten film of Clint Eastwood's that's really a pretty good one. I think you might find it putting you on the edge of your seat for most of the film. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.